Welcome to the Vampire Best Build Guide. And I'm going to be showing you my favorite build for the game after I've played through and beaten it and gotten all of the achievements. Basically, it's a versatile build. It's not necessarily the highest DPS build, but it doesn't matter what you run up against in the game, you'll be able to kill it one way or the other because you can do shadow damage, you can do blood damage, or you can do pretty good melee damage. And you can replenish your resources when you need to. So, Let's get to the build. Basically, all you need to do is reset your skills. So now that we've reset our skills, uh, we can go ahead and allocate the skills as we would as if we were leveling up. And I'll try and get them in the order that I would. Uh, if I was doing the game from the beginning again, so that people who are just starting out can see the path as they level up, at least to level 20, and then you can watch the rest of the playthrough uh, for the other levels. But to start out, you have to purchase the heal, and it's a great skill, so do that. Next up, pick up Shadow Mist. And why Shadow Mist, you might ask? Well, because it's a great ability and your only option for dealing shadow damage. It does an AoE, high damage, and it will stun enemies as long as they're in the area of effect when it goes off. There's a slight delay, but it's not too long for the charging effect. The next ability that you'll want to pick up, interestingly enough, is Blood Spear. Blood Spear, you might ask. Well, because that lets you do a lot of blood damage on a short cooldown at range. So it's also a very good ability if something is resistant to shadow, you can use Blood Spear. If it's resistant to blood, you can use Shadow Mist. Uh, if it's resistant to both of them, then you can use your melee attacks with your weapons. So you can do on a short cooldown damage of every type and you can do significant amounts of damage of every type. The next things that you're going to want to pick up are probably Blood Barrier. Blood Barrier is a great ability, uh, and we'll go down the entire upgrade path later, but it's no cost, gives you one extra hit uh, that you can avoid, and it makes a great fourth ability. Um, and you can get the cooldown all the way down to once every 20 seconds, which makes it pretty useful repeatedly in boss fights, which can be long and drawn out sometimes. So those will be your active abilities. Uh, the only other one that's kind of or two that are worth getting are perhaps Coagulation or Spring. I tend to like Blood Shield or Blood Barrier uh, because of the rest of my build, and I'll explain that in a bit. Uh, the next thing you'll want to probably get is the next level of your heal. That takes you to level 8, which will unlock the ability to pick up Shadow Mist and Blood Spear next again. Now, if you've been struggling at all at this point, uh, you might want to sink some points into body and physical prowess. If you're fine and you're not getting killed too frequently, then avoid investing in these for now and pick up your ultimate. Now the ultimate that I recommend is Abyss, and the reason for that is, uh, while it is single target, it does a lot of damage and it's shadow damage based, and a lot of the bosses are resistant to blood. So you're better off going with shadow. The other one that I like, if you don't want to do the Abyss, is Blood Cauldron. That does blood damage. A lot of bosses are resistant to blood as well as melee. 
so it's not as useful in a lot of the fights. Um, but what Blood Cauldron does is almost as much damage. Uh, and it will do an AoE effect. So if you have adds in the fight, then um, you know they'll get damage too. And it sort of drains the enemy health. The main effect on the main target drains enemy health over time. So it's kind of a nice effect to have uh, when paired with the other abilities. But I think that Abyss is just the best ultimate overall, as many people have said. That takes you to level 12, so you can upgrade Shadow Mist and Blood Spear again. Now for Shadow Mist, I've played around, as you see in the walkthrough later, quite a bit with uh, Shadow Mist with this lower upgrade path. And I do like it. Um, you'll find later in the game that things move around a lot more. Uh, so keeping them in the ground-based damage over time effect is really, really difficult sometimes. Um, and so you end up doing a lot less damage uh, this way, and you're not getting the stun effect from the upper upgrade path, uh, which will do the most damage, assuming something gets hit. Now it's got a tighter area of effect and you don't regenerate blood, but it's easy enough to get your blood back by using your offhand weapon, which uh, I will explain when I get to the weapon part. We'll be able to get the next level of the or next level of Shadow Mist at level 18. In the meantime, we'll upgrade Blood Spear. Blood Spear, I also like the top upgrade path. The reason being is that it can still pierce enemies. So if you line up two enemies at a time, you'll do full damage to both of them. And it is a big damage hit, whereas this one will split the damage between three different spears, which will go in an AoE in front of you. So I'd rather do this one to get the full damage effect. At this point, I think it's probably a good idea to, if you haven't already, uh, put some points into your body condition and your stamina. two points for that. It's also a good time to pick up your next upgrade for the healing line, so this will show you which line to get. Uh, I really like this bottom upgrade path because it does more healing and it's a shorter cooldown time than the top path. True, the top path is an instant heal, but this happens really quickly anyway, so you might as well just go with this one so that you can use it more frequently and get more healing per point of blood. Now, I want to try and get my next point of Shadow Mist increase, so I'm just going to put a point into body. raises me to 18 and gives me just enough XP to do my next point of Shadow Mist. So I will get Shadow Mist, then the next upgrade will be Blood Spear again, and then I'll start working on my Blood Barrier. And once again for Blood Barrier, we'll grab that blood barrier, then we'll come down here to the bottom one. This is so that we can keep the cost at zero. You'll get three hits absorbed rather than two hits absorbed. Your recovery time is 20 seconds, but your duration is 10 seconds. So chances are you can have this up 50% of the time. Uh, 
as long as you're not getting hit too much. Plus having three hits, if I need to, I can pop this, go into melee range, use my offhand weapon to get my blood back, and then I can go back out and start using my ranged attacks if I need to. So this pairs really well with the rest of the build. Let's go on to weapons next. Four weapons. Uh, I like Dragonbane or one of the other swords because they are quick and they do pretty good damage. Four one hands. Uh, you could do one of the other ones um, if you wanted to, but in my opinion, I really like the Dragonbane uh, as a main hand weapon. And what I'll do once I get through the next part is I will upgrade this to just focus on damage as much as possible. I'll have one Blood Drain ability on there, but the rest of it will be damage increase. So for your offhand weapon, I really like the Listed Knife. And with the Listed Knife, you can upgrade all four upgrades with blood. So you'll be draining a lot of blood with each hit. 25 points, I think, uh, with each hit, which is enough to cast an ability each time you hit with this. So you can pop Blood Barrier, go in and hit a few times with Listed Knife. You'll have full blood, and then you can go back to using your other abilities. This one works really, really well, and is actually my main melee attack more often than not. And that is the build, effectively. Um, one more thing to mention, if you want to have a two-hand weapon, I recommend the scythe. The reason I recommend the scythe is that it is incredibly high damage, 330 base damage, Plus, you can do all four upgrades of damage increase. So when we get this to level five, I'll switch these over to damage increase, which means it'll be very heavy hitting. So if I want to do a lot of damage really quickly, this is a good way to go. And that is it for the build video. I really like this build. It lets you do very good melee damage. You can get your blood back if you need it. You can protect yourself with blood barrier if you have something that is vulnerable to shadow you can use shadow mist if you have something that's vulnerable to blood spear or to blood magic then you can use blood spear um, your ultimate is also very highly damaging against most bosses and you've got uh, the ability to get your resources back quickly if you need to uh, without having to bite so it makes the most optimal use of your xp and your ability to take on whatever enemies that you need to. 